So we are now in a BMW iX, and I don't know if you heard that, but that's a pretty cool startup sound. The car recognizes there are two passengers in the front seat, and we're both belted. It's giving us the green to go ahead. Uh, we've driven this car quite a bit today, but wanted to spend some time with it on the street instead of doing a zero to 30 or 40 acceleration and full braking test. So we're not going to try to break any speed records with this particular drive. In fact, I would need to get out of park to do that. So here we go. I would say negatives. The doors sound a little bit junky when they're being released or closed. And the steering wheel, this... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, sexagon would be, I think, the right word here. Uh, just feel, it's it's fine for driving the way that this car wants to be driven, which is with a straight edge and square corners, like when you just go around a, a, a city grid, like where, you know, if I was to just do this 90 degree turn, when my hands are having to really move, I'm fine with it, not a problem. But when you start moving the wheel around more, you go from flat to corner to flat to corner, which is almost, I mean, there's something kind of pointy about not only the wheel, but the, the car itself and the driving experience. It's kind of a, a thorny car, you know, like there, it's, it's not a car you can just like jump into and be like, I get it. It's this. But the other problem is it doesn't necessarily feel very special in the sense of brand specific. The chassis has some BMW feel to it in the damping. Like it, it does feel like a BMW in that sense. But as you're driving it around, I could be in a number of different brands' cars. Um, feels more BMW-like in sport, certainly. And Putting the car in B mode, which regenerates more electricity, definitely helps. But I think this is a car. This is a car for not being in sport mode. This is a car for being in efficient mode and just kind of cruising. This is a comfortable car. This is a quiet car. This is a car that relaxes you and makes you feel at ease until you have to push the brakes, in which case you have a lot of weight, and you're like Fred Flintstone, as someone said earlier, squeezing down, trying to get the car to stop. So this is one of those cars where you have to really dig through the settings and find your custom configuration. There's a lot of tech, and there's a lot of treats here to be exploited and explored, but it's not a car that necessarily gives you uh, as I was explaining earlier, I'm not hesitant to give this car back as I was hesitant to give back the X3M or as we're hesitant to reach our destination with an i3. That's the thing that's missing between this car feels like a BMW, sure, yeah, feels like a lot of modern BMWs, capable, competent, comfortable, quiet. Um, does it feel like a BMW i? Well, yes, in the sense that you've got the carbon when you open the door exposed. You've got the sense of the car's weight and mass is located in a place that makes it not cumbersome and top-heavy. Okay, sure, it's a BMW. It's a BMW i. But it doesn't have that perky vim that the i3 has. It doesn't have that alertness and that excitedness and that excitability that the i3 has and that's something that's very hard to engineer when you have a lot of weight in a car and that's the i3 secret recipe the i3 was an exercise efficiency in the i3 was not a mode on a screen efficiency in the i3 was at the core of its being sport in the i3 was not even a mode that was offered comfort was a mode that was offered. It wasn't trying to be both efficient and sporty and personal. If you see the modes in that car, it's comfort or eco 
Eco Pro or Eco Pro Plus. In a way, that kind of sums up that this car is trying to do so many things and not really hitting any of those, whereas the i3 knew what it wanted to be, it knew what it was, and therefore it's the car that I know I want, I know that people will enjoy and be happy with. I think if you're looking at this iX, instead of a Tesla Model X, you have made the right decision. If you're looking at this iX versus some of the other stuff that's coming, TBD. Rivian's going to make a very good car. Very different type of car, but that's the thing with electrics. Like The personalities of the electrics seem to be more dictated by how big and how massive are they, not what brand are they from. And so this car is giving me a sort of aloofness. Like I could be driving anything right now and I would be equally satisfied. So I think it, it pays to, with this car, kind of dial it back, slow it down, enjoy the sound system, enjoy the seats, enjoy the quietness. Like, what's the rush? But is that a BMW trait? I don't think so. Um, this to me feels like a BMW made for China, BMW made for the Middle East, uh, where you are, it's about arriving in style, it's about traveling in a traffic jam and you know being relaxed and refreshed this is not an ultimate driving machine and it's not really giving those ultimate driving machine cues um, i hope this helps to clarify what this car feels like to operate um, i certainly don't know yet what it feels like to own but i think it's it's far from a waste of money it's far from a poorly engineered product it just doesn't have that BMW-ness and that BMW clarity of purpose that drew me to the brand in the first place and occasionally these days will draw me back to a BMW.